What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. Today, we are in the new 2019 Jeep Renegade, courtesy of Statler Dodge Jeep Ram in York, PA. And so if you were out there right now searching for a relatively inexpensive four-wheel drive slash all-wheel drive vehicle, Renegade has got you covered, so let's jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. I'd said there will be several different trim levels available for the 2019 Renegade. First one being the Sport. That one starts at $22,025. Latitude starts at $23,875. Upland starts at $24,820. Altitude starts at $24,870. Limited, $26,395. Trailhawk four-wheel drive. That's the one we're in today. That one's gonna start at $27,545. And and lastly, the high altitude, that one is gonna start at $28,390. And so with the exception of the Upland trim and the Trailhawk that we have today, all of those other trim levels do come with two wheel drive. So if you wanted to add four wheel drive to any of those, simply add $1,500 to any of those prices. And but so then to go along with that plethora of different trim levels, there are two different engine setups available for the Renegade. First one being a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder. That one's gonna be specific to the sport latitude, altitude, and the upland trim levels. And that one is gonna put out 180 horsepower at 6,400 RPM, 175 pound-feet of torque available at 3,900 RPM. Power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a nine-speed automatic, giving you MPG numbers coming in at 22 in the city, 30 on the highway. But then there is the other engine setup and the new engine setup for the 2019 Renegade. And this one is going to belong to the limited Trailhawk and high altitude trim levels. But this one puts out 177 horsepower horsepower around 5,700 RPM, 200 pound-feet of torque available at around 1,700 RPM. Again, sent to front wheels or all wheels through a nine-speed automatic with MPG numbers 21 city, 29 on the highway. So quite a bit more torque in that engine setup and that engine setup and right around the same MPGs. So having said that, we do have the more powerful turbocharged engine setup today. So I think you guys know what we have to do next here. Let's do a quick little acceleration to see how quickly we can get this 2019 Renegade here up to speed. <laughs> All right, it's not bad actually. I'm kind of surprised. It it definitely kicks you when you first hit the gas there, but of course with 177 horsepower, it's not gonna be the quickest acceleration out there, but it did kind of surprise me. And to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so as expected, you will find four wheel disc brakes for every single trim level. And as far as the braking field goes, yeah, not too bad there. <laughs> Definitely a quick stop. But now I want to touch on the suspension and some of the off-road stuff because believe it or not, the Renegade is quite capable off-road and really has the best off-road capabilities in its class at least. So let me go over that a little bit here because you will find a select terrain system for the four-wheel drive models. I'll specify that. And that's going to give you different terrain driving modes like automatic, snow, sand, and mud. Essentially what those driving modes are going to do is adjust the torque distribution as well as the terrain control system. And I did want to also mention, since we have the Trackhawk trim level today, that's going to add some suspension components as well as expected, including a front suspension skid plate, fuel tank skid plate, hill descent control, a transfer case skid plate, and a transmission skid plate. Skid plates, of course, being there, so when you're going off-roading in the Appalachian Mountains and there's some rocks that you're going over, those rocks don't end up damaging any of the undercarriage, leaving you stranded. So skid plates are definitely important when it comes to off-roading. Then touching on ride quality a little bit, I've had absolutely no issues in my Renegade Trackhawk. I actually think it rides pretty good. Steering feel feels nice. I mean, it's as expected in a Renegade. It's not the heaviest steering feel, but it's not the loosest either. So I think we're pretty good to go there. And when it comes to cabin noise, I'm getting a little bit of exterior wind noise, but again, it's really not all that bad. So once again, no issues. But speaking of noise, first thing I noticed when I got into this Renegade, I have to mention it. When I put the turn signal on, you guys can listen to this here. It is probably the loudest turn signal that I've ever experienced in a car, and it's kind of echoey as well, so that's kind of interesting, but I'm not turning, so I'm gonna turn that off, but it doesn't annoy me or anything, but it is kind of interesting how loud the turn signals are in the Renegade, so I wanted to mention that, but taking a look at visibility, when it comes to visibility, the more boxy of an SUV that you have, typically the better visibility you're gonna get because there's no sloped roof line or anything in the back, so having said that, I can see perfectly fine out the back, so definitely no issues there. And so, but enough of the driving dynamics you guys let's check out the exterior of this 2019 jeep renegade trailhawk because
because there has been a slight redesign for this year. And so starting off front, halogen headlights will come standard for every single trim level. If you wanted that automatic feature, meaning they're going to turn on automatically when it starts to get dark, I'll go with a latitude trim level and up. And again, with that latitude and up, you're going to get fog lights down below. All trims are going to get daytime running lights. And if you wanted LED headlights up there, that is going to be a $700 option. Then make your way to the side. There are power adjustable heated side mirrors for all trim levels. And they will come body colored if you go with the latitude, altitude, or high altitude trims. And you will get roof rails for all trim levels, but that bottom sport trim level, that's going to be the only trim that doesn't come with roof rails. But take a look down at the wheel setup. 16 inch steel wheels come with the sport. 17 inch aluminum wheels come with the latitude and trailhawk. That's what you're looking at now. 18 inch aluminum wheels come with the altitude and limited and 19 inch aluminum alloy wheels are going to come with the high altitude trim level. But then swinging around to the back, rear spoiler with an integrated brake light will come standard for every single trim level along with the rear window wiper as well. And you will find trim level badging back there and if you wanted LED tail lights, go with the high altitude trim level. But just below it all, a single exhaust outlet so you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So but now since we are around back, let's open up that rear hatch there. And once opened up, cargo capacity is going to come in at 18.5 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, simply fold down those back seats. That's going to bump it up to 50.8 cubic feet. And you're going to find cargo tie down loops for all trim levels back there as well. Then make your way to the rear legroom. That's going to come in at 35.1 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. And then make your way to the front seats. There are manually adjustable cloth seats that will come standard. They will come heated if you you go with the limited trim level and up and that limited trim and up is also going to add power lumbar adjustment as well and then taking a look up front there is a tilt and telescoping steering wheel it is leather wrapped for the altitude trim level and up and it will come heated for the limited trim level and up but now let's get to the start up here and let me start by showing you guys the key here you do have your jeep logo on the one side and when you flip it over lock unlock and there is the possibility for that button to pop the rear hatch but there's also a possibility for a remote start which is an option that we have on this one today so i do happen to have that but regardless all trim levels will actually give you a push button start which is kind of located on the steering column there but all you need to do is simply just put your front of the brake and press that engine start button there and so but then once started up tachometer is going to be on your left speedometers on your right there is a fairly large digital display front and center there and by the way to control what is on that digital display simply use the steering wheel mounted controls on the left side there but it's really going to give you a good bit of information including a digital speedometer if you wanted it there's tire pressure information, fuel economy information. Also going to be your radio information when you need your next oil change and a couple other things as well. Then touching on overall interior quality, there is ambient interior lighting for the altitude trim level and up. There is an optional panoramic sunroof. If you wanted that option, simply add $1,600 there. And there is also a MySky power retractable removable panels up top. So it's either or. You can go with the sunroof or you can go with the removable panels. Either way, it adds $1,600 if you were interested. But overall, I guess I would describe it as more of a rugged interior. I do like the hints of the red accent since we have the Trailhawk trim level today, including just above the passenger side glove box, also around the shifter here. But perhaps my favorite part about this particular interior, at least, is the large tech display front and center. By the way, five inch display screen will come with the Sport. However, if you bumped up to the Latitude, Upland, Altitude, Limited, or Trackhawk, you will get a seven inch color touchscreen display. And for the high altitude, you're going to get an 8.4 inch color touchscreen display. But Bluetooth and audio streaming is going to come standard regardless what display you go with. If you go with the 7 inch or the 8.4 inch display screens, you will get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And that's one I would recommend because that is going to give you free navigation through your smartphone as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs up there. Something I use all the time in my personal vehicle. You can also actually check out your climate control information up there. There is a factory navigation system if you go with a high 
high altitude. And of course, you can check out your radio settings. And by the way, touching on the sound system a little bit, a six speaker sound system will come standard for every single trim level. And there is one optional sound system that is gonna be a nine speaker Beats sound system that adds $695, but that is gonna give you 506 watts. But that is not the sound system we have today. We do have the standard six speaker sound system. And by the way, you gotta love the Jeep grill and the exterior of the speakers there. That's a cool little Easter egg kind of setup. So I like seeing that. So well done Jeep on that. But either way, let's turn on the radio here, see what we got playing this morning. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Actually good bit of bass. I was kind of surprised there because this is the six speaker sound system, but not that bad. It's kind of more than I would have expected for a six speaker sound system to be quite honest. So, but so then last thing on the tech display, at least I wanted to mention is regardless of what trim level or what display screen that you go with, you will find a rear view camera up there when you put the Renegade in reverse, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead me into safety. And so you will find front side and side curtain airbags, also up front a driver's knee airbag as well. Also coming with the limited trim level and up there will be an auto dimming rear view mirror here. And if you wanted a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert, that is gonna be an option for the high altitude only, but that one is gonna add $645. And so, but anyways, that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like the video and subscribe. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there, and I will see you guys in the next video. Stay gold. <laughs>